loud. All right, and I am now going to share my screen. So just let me know if this shows up. Uh, where is it? Share. All right, is it visible? It should just be up on yours as a picture of a syllabus? Yeah. Yes. Okay, yeah. perfect. All right, awesome. And then let me pull up the chat. So I can't see everyone's faces right now. So if you have any questions or anything, either just uh, use your microphone or you can type in the chat because I can see that on the split screen. So, all right, this is our class. We're meeting on Monday and technically on Wednesday, but we're not really ever gonna be meeting on Wednesdays. So more on that in a second. Uh, we meet from 5.50 to 7.05. Not every class will we use that entire period. Um, like today, we're definitely gonna be ending early. Um, if you are ever emailing me, just remind me which class you're in. Just include that you're in philosophy 1100, just because I'm teaching a few classes and it's quicker if I remember. Uh, it, I'm quicker to remember who you are if it also includes the class number. All right, uh, this is me, David Dealey. My email, I have two different email addresses, both of which I check regularly, but they refuse to play nicely together. And sometimes one refuses to open on my phone or the other refuses to open on my computer. So you will get emails from both of these. I just wanted to let you know, uh, don't be surprised if you send it to one and get a response from the other or vice versa. And either one, I will receive your email. It's just whichever one you're more comfortable emailing. I check my email regularly. So however often uh, you need to email me, I will respond to it quickly. All right. Office location is, of course, Zoom, and office hours are by appointment. Basically, I find that uh, having set office hours doesn't work that well these days because everyone's schedule is so different. So I'd much rather you just reach out to me by email. Basically, if you want to have an appointment, we will schedule something that works for you. And I have a pretty flexible schedule because, like everyone else, I don't leave my house uh, except to get food. And so, um, yeah. So, um, introduction, I leave this to you all to read. I leave the course objectives to you all as well. Um, all right. So, Zoom link is going to be the same for every Monday class. Uh, basically, here's long story short. Uh, let's just zoom down to remote logistics quickly. Uh, staring at Zoom for long periods of time is no fun. Uh, so, instead of meeting every single twice a week, we're going to meet one time a week on Mondays. So you only have to see my face once a week. Instead, we are going to have homework assignments due just about every week. This way you're able to practice and do the work, but you can do it in your own time without having to stare at a screen and like get bored and then start doing your online shopping and everything else we all are guilty of doing when, whenever we're watching a Zoom class. Um, so basically every Monday, uh, I will be here lecturing, and then, the, except for there's one week in which our Monday class is going to be held on a Wednesday. I think it's two weeks from today because of um, President's Day. So basically, that day we will meet on a Wednesday. I'll send you a special Zoom link for that class, but every other class this semester will be held on a Monday, and you won't have to see my face on a Wednesday. Um, so the Zoom is here. You're all here. So you all found it on the blackboard and it's also here on the, uh, on the syllabus. All right. <clears throat> Remote logistics, blah, 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 blah. Okay. So most of the time, the, uh, assignment, the, the, as I said, most of the time class, the Monday lecture class will be accompanied by a weekly homework assignment. However, there's going to be a couple weeks in which I just record a video and post it to a YouTube. Um, so this class is always going to be getting recorded because of the fact that, you know, the world is crazy, people get sick, stuff comes up. So if you miss class, there will be a lecture recording of what happened in class posted to a YouTube channel. The YouTube channel is uh, attached to the Blackboard already. I will also email out a copy. Um, right now, there's nothing up there because we haven't had any classes, but I will keep posting those quickly after class happens. So if you ever miss class or, you know, you had to buy some, you know, the online shopping got the better of you and you didn't pay attention for half of class and you want to go back and watch it again, it's up there. All right. Um, so uh, attendance. A, 
the uh, Baruch policy is that you cannot be penalized for not attending class due to the logistical difficulties of remote learning. Um, that's why we're doing the recordings. However, if nobody ever showed up, I would get very sad. So please, somebody at least show up so I'm not talking into the void. Um, cameras. Now, when this course was listed, it was officially listed as a please turn your cameras on class. Now, I know because of scheduling and all and everything else, not everyone saw this little technicality thing. So officially, I could say, if you don't ever turn your camera on, I'm going to ask you to drop the class. However, I understand the world is crazy. Um, so I'm not going to require you to have your cameras on, and I'm not going to suggest you drop the class if you are unable to do so. I would greatly prefer it that everyone have their cameras on. I love being able to see faces. I love being able to see responses, which is why I included this bit on the sign-up sheet. However, I understand that you may not have noticed that or this was the only time that fit your schedule or something like that. So if you cannot turn on your camera, uh, I'm not going to yell at you. I'm not going to say, please drop the class. But um, I will be including a participation part in the class. The easiest way to participate is just to have your camera on and to look at me. And you, know, you can kind of see when someone's looking at the screen and when someone is like, you know, doing the online shopping. So I can tell if you're paying attention by looking at it. So that's one way to participate. Um, in fact, let me zoom down to the participation while I'm on this topic. So 10% of the class is participation. Easiest way to participate is just have your camera on and pay attention. However, something comes up, you can't do that. There are other ways to get that participation grade. Just asking me questions in the chat, asking me questions, making comments using your microphone. Uh, even something as simple as spamming the little Zoom emojis. So if you go into the Zoom, there's the, I can never find them, but I think it's called reactions. So if you do that, you know, I say something ridiculous and you want to make the absolutely flabbergasted face. That is one way to participate in class. Even if it's sending me questions outside of class time or meeting with me during office hours. Basically, I just want this to be as interactive as a class can be when we're all spread out, whoever the hell knows where. Um, so the more we can do to make class interactive, the more I can see your faces, the more you talk with me, the more energized I get, the more interesting classes, the better it goes. So um, that's why there's a participation. Cameras on would be ideal and I would love it, which is why I included that bit in the sign up. But again, if you can't or this was the only one that fit, I'm not going to like scold you for not having your cameras on. Um, I might start each class with a like I get down on my knees and beg, please turn the cameras on. But other than that, you know, won't be much. All right. Um, all right. As I said, there's going to be recordings. Now, the course requirements and grading. There are going to be uh, weekly assignments. Now, um, there's all that's going to be half the grade, which comes to 6.25% each. I know the calculations are annoying, but math. Um, there's also going to be two separate little assignments later on, which are going to be related to paper writing. Um, then there's going to be a final paper that's due after the final class, and then there's the participation. So there's not going to be a midterm. There's not going to be a test. I tried to do a midterm last semester. Getting everyone's computers working at the same time was a disaster. So I'd much rather you all just work on your homeworks and then work on a paper at the end of the semester. Um, all right, so the weekly assignments. They're going to be posted and turned in using the class Blackboard, and they're found under the heading Weekly Assignments. Um, they're due by the time I wake up on Saturday. So basically, I want them done by the end of the day Friday or the morning Saturday. Why? Because I want to grade them over the weekend and get them back to you before class on Monday so we can talk about it. I don't have time on Monday to grade them, so it's kind of annoying. Uh, but good news is I've already got them set up. They will basically be ready to go as soon as class is over. So you can work right after class is done. They're not, they will be posted basically as soon as class happens. And then you can access them on the Blackboard. Um, and then they will be due Saturday so I can get them done over the weekend and give them back to you on Mondays. Um, because I like to go over the homeworks in class on Mondays just to make sure that there's any questions, comments, concerns. Uh, or any questions, comments, concerns that you have are addressed. Now, um, 
I'm going to say more on this later, but the weekly assignments and every other assignment in this class, as I've said already, the world is crazy. Uh, we've got a pandemic and we're all taking class from our living rooms or bedrooms or wherever we can be. Uh, because of this, all deadlines are going to be somewhat fluid. If you know that something comes up, um, if you know you've got something happening on the weekend that a paper's or an assignment is due and you need a couple extra days, let me know. We will work something out. You can get that extension. I want to make sure that you get the work done and you learn the stuff. And if that means I have to give you an extension for it, that is fine. Also, if you get sick and you miss a weekly assignment and you uh, want to get it done and still get credit, just get in contact with me. Let me know the situation, and I am almost certainly going to give you some extra time to get it in without taking points off. Um, even if it's like, you know, I want you all to get credit for this class. Online learning is hard enough without having, you know, it's hard enough when there's not a global pandemic. Learning in a global pandemic when we're all in our own houses having to share internet and laptops and everything else, I don't want this to be another, like, Thing you have to worry about. So anything that, you know, if you get sick or a loved one gets sick or even something like, you know, the stress of the fact that you haven't been outside in two weeks has like breaking you down and you just have trouble with the homework that week, let me know. We'll work something out. If you want to meet with me about office during office hours to talk about the homeworks, we can do that. Anything that will help you all get through the homeworks in a way that you get credit and you're not absolutely miserable, just get in touch with me and we can work something out. Seriously, I don't want this class to be one more thing that is causing stress in your life. Or at the very least, I want to minimize the amount of additional stress from this class. Um, so that is that stuff. Uh, if at any point something's not displaying right with a weekly assignment or you're having trouble posting it to the Blackboard and you want to email me about it, that's totally fine. Um, Basically, whatever works for you works for me. All right, final papers. Uh, there's going to be a final paper for this class. It's generally going to be like a three to five page paper. And do not worry, the paper is not going to sneak up on you. The final, basically the final month of this class, all we are going to be doing is talking about how to write papers, what I'm looking for on papers, and why I think paper writing is a valuable skill, and how to improve it, and how to make it not miserable. So it's not, I'm not one of those people who's just like, write a paper, go. I think that that's a stupid way to teach paper writing. Um, every teacher is looking for something a little bit different and there's different styles of writing for different classes. So I want to make sure that I make as crystal clear as possible to you all what I'm looking for in a paper. So do not worry about the papers until later in the semester. I will provide you with a bunch of prompts you will read over those prompts. We will then spend a class talking about how to come up with a good thesis for one of those prompts. We'll then talk, spend a class talking about how to do an outline. You will turn in your thesis and your outlines. It will be graded pass fail and I'll give you a little feedback. And then after the last class, your final paper will be due. So by that point, you'll already have had a lot of time thinking about it and it shouldn't be too, too terrible. Um, one thing about, this is on final papers, but it also applies to weekly assignments, and I will include this in all the weekly assignments. We all have our quirks and our pet peeves. Uh, most things I'm pretty lenient about. One thing that really annoys me, I just hate renaming files. I don't know why I hate renaming files so much, but when I get like 16 things that are named homework assignment one, and I have to go in and rename them with all your names, it drives me nuts. It's a character flaw. I should talk to my therapist about it, but you know, it's a problem that is easily solved if you just include your name in your file name. So if you turn in homework one, just put your name in it. I don't care if it's your first name, last name, just so I don't have to go through and rename all the files. Um, so also uh, official policy is every day the paper is late. I take off a third of a grade, but as I said, everything is up in the air. So if you know that you have to turn in something late, just reach out to me with an extension. If after, if you turn in your paper six hours late, even a day late and are like, here's the situation, I probably won't take off. All right, um, any questions thus far? I feel like this is a decent spot to pause. If 
anyone's got any questions, feel free to type them in the chat or shout or anything else. All right. Um, yeah, I have a question. Um, yeah, yeah, go yeah. ahead. So I wanted to ask, uh, what is the topic for the final paper? So the topic, did you say the topic? Uh, yeah. Okay, so basically, um, give me one second, then I will answer that question. Um, I, I'll introduce that into the context of showing what the whole uh, like class schedule is. So let me just finish off these last two things, then I'll jump into the schedule. And then during the schedule, I'll show you what the three main topics that the paper could be about are. So if, if you still have this question, Roy, in about uh, 10 minutes, just say, hey, professor, you forgot to answer my question. But um, I just think it'll insert more naturally in that place. All right, uh, last thing is you must turn in the final paper to pass this class. Uh, mathematically, it would be possible to pass the class even if you didn't do that. But I value the final paper enough that I want you to turn in something. So even if you turn in like, it's better to turn in something with your name on it so that I can give you a zero such that you can then pass the class instead of not turning in something. Um, and more on that later. All right, zooming down to this. First off, are there required texts? Yes, do you have to purchase them? No, you will not spend any money for this class. Everything you need is on the Blackboard. Uh, you can download the PDFs off of that. And also once I have everyone's email addresses, I, can, I will email out a copy of everything as well. So do not worry about um, having to buy any books for this class. Buying textbooks is a waste of money. Uh, it's much better to just find them in other ways because most of the stuff that you could find in a textbook can be found in other ways. All right. Um, so the way that this class is going to work in terms of the schedule is written over here. We've got what week it is and then the days that fall in that week. So uh, for this class, February 1st, that's today, is a Monday. And today we just talked about the course overview. Saturday, you do have a first weekly assignment due. Now, to be clear, this weekly assignment is going to be pretty straightforward. It is tell me your name, tell me what you like to go by, and tell me what's the best email address to reach you at. Why? Because I like to send out lots of emails. And so very often, uh, the, the email that gets posted to the Blackboard is for some reason, if you've ever transferred from one of the community colleges, the uh, Blackboard never updates. So you end up, the email address I have goes to an email address that very often a student hasn't used in two years, which is not an ideal way of doing it. So if you have an email address you prefer me to email you at, that's what's going to be in the weekly assignment. It's literally just like, here's my, this is what my name is. This is what I like to go by and here's my email address. So it's gonna be pretty straightforward. If you just do that, you'll, you'll pass it. I think that's all that's on it. There might be, oh, actually, wait, no. There's also a quiz element. The quiz element is things like read, uh, th I think there's a few questions about this syllabus. So basically I wanna make sure that you've done the syllabus reading. So basically the first weekly assignment is how many papers are there for the class? And what's your name? You do that, you're going to ace the first homework. It's not going to be hard, and I'm not going to grade it very uh, tough. Uh, Elio, you asked, is there a max or min on the papers? Let me um, come back to that question as well as I zoom down a little bit. Um, but basically with these, uh, the short answer is yes and no, which is not a very satisfying answer. But uh, I'll explain in a minute what I mean by yes or no on paper numbers. So, uh, What's written here on the left is the day you have class. What's written here on the right is what is going to be discussed in that class. So it is good to do the readings before this class period. So for next Monday, you're going to want to do this Palmer reading, which is on a guy's website. It's a philosophy professor who just included uh, stuff about critical thinking on a website that is open access, et cetera. And then this Cavender and Kahane is something that is posted to the Blackboard. You can download it. And then each Saturday, you've got the weekly assignments due. All right, so just a, a big picture thing about the way the class is. You can basically divide this class into, I can never remember exactly how many, a few different parts. 
The first part is just going to be basic. What do we mean by critical thinking and what goes into good critical thinking and reasoning skills and why should we care about it? So that's going to be next week, week three, week four, week five, week six, and week seven. These are all just how to think well. Then basically we're going to have a, a section on the things about the human mind that make it hard for us to think well in a lot of cases. So we all, in some cases, are very good thinkers and in other cases are very bad at it. Human beings are prone to things like conspiracy theories. We're prone to making sorts of mistakes. Why is that? What is it about our minds? Also, how many of you have ever bought something on Instagram because there was a really clever Instagram ad and then it got there and you were like, why on earth did I just spend money on this? What on earth did I do this for? We've all done it. I mean, I don't have an Instagram, but I've done it on online shopping and everything else. So like, why is it that even though we know I'm never going to use this thing, do we end up buying it anyway? Well, there are things about our mind that make us prone to these sorts of things. And these facts about our mind are things that advertisers know and exploit. So the second bit of the course is just going to be learning how our mind works such that we can make sure like, oh, you know what? That isn't something I should be doing, even though it feels so nice or it seems natural. All right. So that's going to be up through here. Then here is uh, Roy's question of what are our papers going to be about? Well, this is an ethics and critical thinking class. So once we've done a lot of thinking about how to think, we're then going to have towards the end of the semester, we're going to have three different weeks in which we discuss uh, ethical topics. And so what this is, is we're going to look at the trolley problem. Um, we're going to look at cultural relativism, and we're going to look at issues tied to hate speech online. And we're basically just going to talk about the elements of this. And then your final paper is going to be addressing one of these three topics. Now, it's going to specifically be addressing a version of this in a paper prompt that I have written on this issue. So instead of just being like, what do you think about cultural relativism? The paper prompt will be something like, imagine you're in a this crazy situation and you come across a culture that does things very differently than you. And one of the things they do involves like a practice you really don't like. How should you think about this group? And what it's basically going to be is taking this particular topic as a kind of a case study or practice on how to apply your critical thinking skills that you've learned throughout the semester to a bite-sized ethical topic. So that's what the paper is going to be. And the paper topics will be written such that there's going to be a suggested three to five page paper limit. Um, or pa three to five pages will be the suggestion. Now, before I said, is there a max or minimum amount of words to use on the paper? Well, this three to five pages is a suggestion. What I mean by that is I design the paper prompts such that they can usually be answered well in somewhere between three and five pages. Now, does that mean that if you turn in a two-page paper, you're going to fail? No, it does not. If you turn in a 37-page paper, will you fail? No, it does not mean that. Rather, I am just suggesting three to five because usually the best papers fall within that range. If you go under three pages, it's usually you don't say enough in two pages usually to address the prompts. Now, I've gotten A papers that were two pages long because they were incredibly concise and clear and they did the job in a short amount of time and that was an A paper. Also, I've had people turn in 10 page A papers. The worry is when people start going over five pages, it's very often because somebody hasn't proofread and is just repeating themselves and it's a little wordy. So um, usually the best papers stay within the three to five range, but I will never take off points just because the paper is over or under the limit. If it's over the limit because it's wordy and doesn't make sense, I take off points. If it's under the limit because you don't do enough, I'll take off points. But if it's under the limit and still does everything great, you don't lose points. And um, some other things about papers while I'm on it. Again, we will talk about papers a lot, lot more in the semester because the final three weeks of the class or I guess it's the final, 
the final two weeks are just going to be discussing how to write papers. Um, I'm going to talk about how to write them, what I'm looking for, how to make sure you have a good paper. I'm going to provide an extra video that you can watch just about how to write a thesis and various other things. So basically, you are not going to be going into this totally blind. You will be provided with a lot of extra uh, resources to watch, to talk about, and I'm happy to talk about papers. But um, other things about papers. I am not a stickler for grammar and I am not a stickler for punctuation or spelling. Uh, you will learn in this class, I have no idea how to spell. So this first class, uh, I'm just sitting on a couch talking to you, but starting next week, I will have a little whiteboard set up. I'll be teaching. It'll be somewhat more like a regular classroom environment. And you will quickly learn from how I write on the board that I cannot spell. I'm not going to judge you all for spelling things poorly if I can't spell things right. Um, even on your homework assignments, I will never take off points for spelling. Basically, if I know what you're trying to say, if I can figure it out, I, I care about the substance of it. There are many teachers out there who care about spelling and punctuation. It's a skill you should learn, but I will leave it to the professors who care about such things to teach you. I am not one of those people, so I'm not going to care. Also, uh, on the final paper, they're designed, so the prompts will be designed such that you will not need to use any outside sources other than things we talk about in class. If you want to use outside sources, you are more than welcome to do so. That's great. Um, in terms of citations, I also don't care what citation format you use. If you want to use footnotes, use footnotes. You want to use MLA, use MLA. You want to use Chicago, use Chicago. You want to just include a little work cited at the end with some hyperlinks. That's great. Basically, I just want it that if the plagiarism gods come down from on high and say, did this person plagiarize? I can say, no, they didn't. Here's where they got their sources. Um, so uh, that stuff on papers, they will be turned in on Blackboard towards the end of the semester. And again, do not worry about them now. I will be bothering you about them many, many more times. Uh, the Weekly assignments will also be turned in on the Blackboard. There should be a link on the left that says weekly assignments. As I said, they're due on Saturday mornings officially, but that's flexible. And as long as you reach out to me, if you miss the deadline, I probably will not take off any points. And if you're having trouble on the Blackboard, because as all of us, I'm sure, have many times discovered uh, Blackboard sometimes is utterly incompetent at what it's supposed to do. So if you're having trouble, just email me something. Um, I'm good at responding to the emails. Uh, all right, any questions at this point on the schedule, on the papers, on anything? If not, I will push on to the last little bits. If you've got any questions, feel free to ask. I just had a quick question. Yeah, absolutely. So um, from what I'm understanding, the final paper is, of course, three to five pages. Mm -hmm. And the two um, papers that I'm looking at when you're reading it from like May and there's another couple of more two dates that you have for a paper. Yeah, yeah. Are those going to be three to five pages as well, too? No, no. These, you mean the thesis assignment and the yeah. outline assignment? No, mm -hmm. those are going to be, um, they will be special things I assign and they're going to be quite easy. The thesis assignment will literally be something like, here are the three props to practice writing a thesis. Just tell me what the six possible theses you could have are. So that'll be about a page. And then the outline is literally going to be like a, just give me what your bullet pointed outline for your paper is going to be. You're allowed to change it just to, to force you to think about the paper more than just the night before it's due. These will not be three to five pages. There'll be a maximum of like, I mean, the thesis assignment will ideally be six sentences and the outline assignment will be one to two pages. And, uh, but that will even, those probably won't be full sentences. They can just be uh, like um, fragments, like in this paragraph, first I'll do this, then I'll do this. Just simple things like that. So not too much. Understood, thank you. Yep, absolutely. All right, any other questions at this point on anything on the schedule? All right, then this is where I put on my serious face and say, don't cheat. Uh, so the homework assignments, I am going to say, uh, look, there's going to be homework assignments and I want you all to do well on them. And if that means you're all working together, uh, that's fine by me if you all wanna talk outside of class and work together on the homework assignments, um, that is fine. Uh, 
Just don't literally control C, control V, someone else's homework assignment. I'll notice that. Uh, in terms of the paper, the paper is going to be very, very difficult to plagiarize because it is uh, basically I write up weird paper prompts, as I said. And because of this, it's very difficult to find a paper pro a paper on one of the prompts somewhere on the internet because I come up with them at like in dark rooms late at night and they're weird. And therefore, uh, usually what I found is if somebody tries to take a paper from the internet and use it to answer one of my paper prompts, it is very obvious that it is uh, cheating. And it's also just garbage because it's not in any way addressing the prompt. So because of this, it is just better for everyone if you do not plagiarize on the paper. As I said, I'm pretty lenient about uh, deadlines. So if it's the night before something's due and you're like, oh my God, I'm not going to be able to get this done. I need to plagiarize. It is better just to reach out to me and be like, hey, professor, I need an extension. I'm almost certainly going to give you the extension. I would much rather you do your own work and get it in late than just take someone else's work. Also, the quickest way to do poorly in a class is to make the professor very grumpy. And nothing makes me, other than having to rename documents, the only other thing that makes me grumpy is having to fill out paperwork to send to the dean's office. And so it, it's not like you just plagiarize and I say you fail. I then have to send a piece of paper to the dean's office. And then I have to have this awkward meeting with you in which you say, why am I here? And I say, I know why you're here. You know, I know that you know why you're here. Let us dance around the topic that we both know what happened here, but we're not going to say it because I want you to, it, it's just really uncomfortable. It's my least favorite part. It's better for everyone if you just don't do it. Um, there's going to be times during the semester with the homework assignments where you all have the same answers because you work together or you have similar answers. I'm not going to be super sticklery on that as long as it's clear that you all understand what's going on. Papers, though, make sure you're working on your own. Uh, and again, if it's copied from someone else, it's very obvious to me or it's just like a garbage paper. Again, I am I understand, though, that you're busy people. I understand that because of this, you are going to have times in which you need an extension, especially when the world is falling apart and we're in a pandemic. So just reach out to me, let me know what your situation is, and I'm almost certainly going to give you an extension. Um, if any health stuff comes up, uh, I'm more than certainly going to give you an extension. All right. Um, one last thing on uh, this semester on a similar sort of note. Um, I know the world is crazy and I know that stuff is going to come up. We're going to have internet problems. We're going to have family issues. We're going to have uh, mental health stuff where you can't make class or something like that. I believe all of you, I'm just going to assume basically, like if you tell me something, you're not lying to me and I'm never going to follow up on it. If you say you were sick, that means in my mind, you were sick. If you say that your mother was sick, no questions asked, your mother was sick. If you, for your own well-being, just want to make it more official and get a doctor's note, you're welcome to. And if you want to show it to me, you can. But I will never ask you for that sort of thing. If you tell me you had to work late or you tell me that you were working overtime and missed class or you didn't get a good night's sleep, I believe you. You don't have to provide me with anything. Uh, you're all adults. I trust you. And if you want to go use that and exploit me, Go ahead. I'm never going to follow up on 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 it with you. Um, just that's my general policy. Is this is a class about learning and making things like getting you guys to do some critical thinking, getting you got to hopefully learn something. Hopefully, despite the fact that the world is falling apart and I'm talking to you on a computer and you're spending way too much time staring at a screen, it's not a completely miserable experience. Like that is my goal. And if that means that you're going to miss some classes and that's fine. Also, another thing, um, I understand that stuff comes up and look, I know there are professors out there who, you know, a lot of people get into academia because they really loved learning and they were, uh, you know, the perfect students themselves. I am not one of those people. There were plenty of times I didn't do the reading. Uh, there are plenty of times I cut corners. I understand, especially in a time like this when we're all haven't seen sun in days and haven't been outside in a week, that like there are times in which we aren't going to all get the readings done. 
I want this class to be something where we all learn. So if there is a time in which you haven't done the reading and therefore you're not following something, just be honest and be like, hey, professor, I didn't get a chance to do the reading this week, so I don't quite know what you mean by that. Would you explain it to me in class? Like, would you just quickly explain what that means? I would much rather you do that and I explain it and then we move on and you understand it, then we all pretend that we do the readings when we didn't. I will never judge you. I will never question you. Um, the world is crazy and you are all busy, extremely exhausted people like any, if you're at all like me, you're hanging on to your sanity by a thread and there are weeks in which everything is overwhelming. And that is understandable and okay. We were not designed to live in a world in which we're locked away in apartments for weeks on end, only connecting with people through screens. If because of that, you weren't able to do the reading, I'm not going to judge you for it. If because of that, you need a little extra time on the homeworks, I'm not going to judge you for it. I do not want this class to be one more thing that is exhausting you more than it has to. So if at any time you have to reach out for me to me, want to let me know the situation, I'm happy to do so. If you want to talk to me in office hours in a Zoom call, I'm happy to do it. If you're somebody who wants to talk on the phone, um, let me know and I can call. Like anything works. Uh, I just do not want this class to be any more miserable than a Zoom online class in the middle of a global pandemic is by definition going to be. All right. So that's my little spiel about uh, also, even if it's something like you're stressed and you just want to talk or anything like that, or like, hey, professor, I'm stressed and I didn't get to the homework. Just reach out. Let me know the situation. I'm never going to judge you. Um, anybody who is fully sane right now is a superhuman and like deserves like, I don't quite know what, but you are, you're a better person than I am. So um, yeah. All right. So that's that. Lastly, accessibility services. If you, for, I am not qualified to judge what people need based on uh, any sort of uh, disability or differently abledness or anything like that. For that reason, I cannot get know what you need. Therefore, you need to go through the accessibility services. Once you get the accommodation letter from them, whatever they say is a recommendation, I agree to immediately. So if you need any assistance, special assistance, go through them. Um, we're not going to have any tests. So if you uh, are worried about needing extra time on tests, don't worry about it because there aren't any tests. Lastly, uh, if you are somebody who is going to have to miss class due to any religious holidays, that is totally fine. I mean, as I said already, I'm never going to be taking attendance in this class because we aren't taking attendance this semester. So even if, uh, if you want to let me know that the reason you miss class is for a religious holiday, you're welcome to let me know that, but don't feel like you have to. If you aren't here, I will just assume you had a good reason for it. Um, all right, that takes us to the end of the syllabus. Does anyone have any last questions on the syllabus or on anything else I talked about today? All right, if, if nobody has any questions, um, then the last thing I'll say is, again, there is a homework assignment due on Saturday morning. It is going to be for you to tell me your name, what you prefer to go by. And again, um, this is open-ended. If your name, like, if your name is David and you want to go by Dave, let me know that. If your name is David and you want to make sure that I pronounce it David instead of David, just say, hey, my name is David spelled David, but I like to, to be pronounced David, like David Diggs. And here's how, here's the pronunciation. If you want to go by like king of the world, that's fine. You tell me what you want to go by. I will respond to however you want to go by it. And in terms of email, if you want, if the best way to reach you is on your Baruch email address, just let me know that email. If you much prefer to use your Gmail or a different email address, just let me know that one. Just whatever way I can get in touch with you so that if something comes up, I can reach out. If you have a question, I know who it is, et cetera. Um, oh, one last thing on cameras. I love that so many of you have your cameras on. Those of you that do not, again, I will never take off points, but just one general thing. If you are someone who doesn't have your camera on, it is useful in, in lieu of the camera to include a picture of yourself. Um, why is this useful? Well, just the way the human mind works, or at least the way my mind works, and there's a lot of evidence 
uh, supporting that this is just a general human characteristic, we are better at remembering things that we're familiar with. So if I know how you look, it's just easier for me to connect the dots. So if like I know that you look a certain way and then I get an email from you, I'll be like, oh, that's this person. And then it'll just be quicker and easier and I will be uh, much better able to connect the dots. And so I'll remember, oh, this this person was the one who asked me this other related question in class. So I can tie this thing that we talked about in class back in with this email. So if I know what you look like and I know your name, just anything to make it easier for me to remember. If you don't want me to know what you look like, that is your prerogative. But just generally speaking, it is easier for me to remember you if I know what you look like. All right, any last questions, comments, concerns, feelings? All right. Uh, anything else? Cameron, I will respond to you uh, after, I will respond in the chat after I'm done talking here. So anybody else? All right. Um, if not, then you are all free to go. I will hang out here after class to talk to you for uh, a little bit if anyone wants to talk to me, but otherwise you are all free to go. I will be loading this recording up on the YouTube either later tonight or this uh, tomorrow morning. Otherwise, have a great week. Again, all I need from you this week is to respond to the homework, which is posted, should be up on the Blackboard right now. If it's not there, let me know. Um, but yeah, have a great week, everyone. Uh, enjoy the snow. I hope you're all cozy and cuddled in warm. All right. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye, Professor.